What's up guys, it's Alex Torelli. Welcome back to an episode of The Hand of the Day. I'm bringing you this one right outside the Hyatt in Phuket on the beautiful Andaman Sea, incredible spot. Hand of the Day. This hand comes from 2010, the World Series Poker main event. 15 people left and awesome hand between Jonathan Dumal and Matt Affleck. So Jonathan Dumal is in the cutoff. It's unclear what the blinds are, but I'm pretty sure they're 120K, 240K based on his raise size. He decides to open to 575,000 in the cutoff with two jacks. Affleck on the button, three bets to 1.55 million. Folded back around to Dumal, Duhamel, who makes it 3.9 million. Matt, Matt Affleck calls and we go heads up to the flop. Now pre-flop, I'm totally okay with Duhamel's open, obviously with two jacks. Affleck's three bet on the button is totally standard. Things get interesting when it's folded back around to Duhamel, who has definitely an interesting choice between four betting and just calling. So I can't say exactly what the best thing to do is because poker is not really a completely solved game. It's not like a spot where there's one clear answer. Your decision in real time with 15 people left in the main event in a high pressure situation like this is ultimately going to depend on, depend on many factors. Some of the things I would consider are stack size. I like the four bet more because Duhamel covers Aflac, so the fact that he has stack leverage over his opponent is generally a good time to apply a lot of pressure because his opponent has to be more worried about busting than Duhamel because Duhamel covers him. So I'm okay with the four bet from that point of view. I don't, I mean, I'm also okay with the four bet based on positions. Cut off the button, obviously ranges are gonna be wider, and it's more likely that Aflac's three betting the light on the button Therefore, Duhamel's 4-bet doesn't necessarily mean that he has a premium monster, so Aflac could reasonably con continue with worse hands. One of the things that I don't have, the key pieces of information that I'm missing, is the history between these two players and how they've been playing and their tendencies to raise and 3-bet preflop. So, if Duhamel had been opening a ton of pots because he's the chip leader, then 4-betting seems more reasonable because it's conceivable that Aflac could think that his opens don't mean as much. On the other hand, if Duhamel's been super tight and Aflac's been super tight, maybe a 4-bet here is a little overly aggressive with two jacks and you could just opt to call. So those are some of the things that I consider when making these types of decisions, but ultimately what you're gonna do in real time is going to depend on the variables that you have presented to you. Over to Aflac now, facing a 4-bet, he opts to just call in position. I'm okay with this play. What I feel like the problem is in these situations is that when people call here, they always have super premium hands. And so it's, you know, it's it's a little bit unbalanced from them when they do opt to call a four bet in this spot. If if Affleck's mixing in some bluffs, maybe some hands like Jack 10 suited or whatever, hands that have decent amount of equity facing a reasonable size four bet that can conceivably play post flop, I'm okay with flatting here with aces to protect your range. Anyway, we go heads up, $8.5 million pot, huge hand brewing here. Heads up to the flop. Flop comes 10, 9, 7, rainbow, and Duhamel now checks. I'm okay with this check from Duhamel because if you see bet here, it looks like pretty damn strong, number one, and this flop is reasonably coordinated that could definitely have hit your opponent's range. A lot of your bluffs are gonna check, and so by checking here, you allow your opponent to put money in the pot with a worse hand more of the time. You also balance your range, make yourself a little more tricky to play against. I definitely love the check here from Duhamel. Affleck now decides to bet five million, and while I do love betting with aces here, five million seems a little bit big. In a cash game, betting something like 60, 70% of the pot is totally reasonable, but in a tournament, I think a $5 million bet here signifies that he has a reasonable size holding. He could be betting five million with a bluff, but at the same time, I think going for something like 3.2 million with his whole range is a little bit better of a play. It allows Duhamel to float, maybe get out of line, maybe call with a wider range of hands, and it makes Aflac's range look weaker. Conceivably, he could be bluffing with something like ace-jack or king-jack or something like that. Over to Duhamel has a very clear check call. Really, it would be way too aggressive to check raise. Can't really check fold with an over pair and a gut shot. So we go heads up to the turn. The turn comes, Queen of Diamonds, bringing a backdoor flush draw, and Duhamel now has a very clear check. Affleck, very clear bet, he opts to shove. He has 11 million, the pot's already twice that. Very clear shove by Affleck, so nothing he can really do there. Now over to Duhamel, who has a serious, seriously tough decision. 
In a cash game, this would be a very clear call where you're only playing for chip EV. I mean, even against something like aces, even if he knows his opponent has aces, given the price he's getting, he's getting three to one, he only needs 25% equity. He basically has that even against two aces. So he can never fold this hand in a cash game. But in a tournament, there's a lot more to consider and that's the idea of ICM. In other words, every chip that you gain isn't worth base value, it's worth a fraction of that. So you have to consider here that you want to be above ice, you want to be above chip EV to make a call like this, and that means your opponent has to be bluffing or have non-premium hands a reasonable amount of the time. While Dahomel does cover his opponent, it gives more credence to him calling because if he calls and, run and is wrong, he still has nine million left and he could still conceivably make the final table or move up in pay jumps with that nine million. If this was for, for his whole tournament life, I think this would be a more clear fold, but because he still has nine million behind, there is some merit in calling here because if he loses, his stack, his stack value doesn't go to zero, it still is reasonably placed with a decent amount of big blinds. So in short, if Duhamel, if this decision was for all of Duhamel's stack, I would, I would probably consider folding here, I would almost definitely fold. But at the same time, because he has a decent sized chip stack left, I think he could opt to call. Now we gotta consider what types of hands does Affleck have that are worse than two jacks. Could he be bluffing here? I mean, maybe he could bluff with something like ace jack, but Duhamel has two of the jacks. So a lot of Affleck's bluffs are blocked by Duhamel's specific hand. I don't think Affleck's ever gonna have ace king. I don't think he's gonna play pre-flop this way with ace king. And I also don't think he's gonna bet the flop with ace king. If he does, I guess he could shove the turn, but I just don't think that's that likely of a hand. Some of the turns are that Affleck could be bluffing with, some of the hands Affleck could be bluffing with have now turned a pair with something like a queen, and those hands might shove as well. So he could also have sets. I mean, there's a lot here that Affleck could have that beats Duhamel, and there's not that many bluffs. So I still don't love the call, even though Duhamel has so many chips, but he is getting a great price, so I understand it's a super tough spot. If I had to close my eyes and make a decision, I would probably fold this. In 2010, I don't feel like many players were calling four bets light pre-flop, and so I think that skews their range much more likely towards pairs, and pretty much every pair on this board has you beat. Tens, nines, sevens, queens, kings, and aces all have you crushed, and so I think I would just fold this hand and let it go. That being said, that's why I'm sitting here making videos, that's why I do Hummel's the main event champion. Heart to him, power to him for having balls and making a super hero call in this spot. And this hand runs out so brutal for Aflac, who could have been the main event champion, uh, conceivably if he uh, the river did not come an eight. Pretty brutal hand for Aflac, who got 80th in the main event the year before, now busts in 15th. And that just shows how much variance there is in tournament poker. So I get a lot of you guys asking me stuff like, oh, you know, things never go my way in tournaments, whatever. Stop bitching, remember Aflac, who should be the main event champion. Uh, the river doesn't come in eight, and he gets it in with 75% equity with one to go. That is brutal. I hope you enjoyed this hand of the day. Uh, subscribe to my channel, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what you would have done if you were to Hummel, and I'll see you guys next time on the hand of the day. Peace.